So what we are going to talk about now is mostly covered in this note. So really the place I want to start out from is that this statement that we are interested in what we are going to call elementary particles or fundamental particles or well, uh, the most basic unit of matter and matter and other things that we don't call matter. But it's just the ba very basic building blocks of universe are what we are interested in. And what you will find is that once you, once that's your starting point, you'll find that many of the things that you are used to thinking of as being elementary are not actually elementary. For example, elements are not elementary enough for particle physicists, as in atoms, they are not elementary enough for particle physicists because atoms are made up of nucleus and electron. The moment you can say that, it's made up of something that's saying, oh, that's not elementary. It's made up of some smaller things. So really, these elementary particles will be subatomic particles. And you know two of these elementary particles already. So those two are, let me just start listing them. You know photon. Photon is one of these elementary particles. And you know electron. That's the other elementary particle that you already know. And you don't actually, we haven't gone over any of the other elementary particles yet. So when you look at your textbook, your textbook will just throw this at you in section one, introduction to particle physics. And they will essentially give you a version of, um, they will throw this at you. Um, and what this is, the, this is a summary of what's in one of these posters. It's in this poster here. <laughs> and, um, when you just look at that, the only two particles you know that are here are electron and photon. And it's, you know, I feel that there's too much information all at once. So I wanted to slowly ease you into all the particles that people discover in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. I think that's the last time the top quark was discovered or finally confirmed in lab. Oh, oh, and wait, this doesn't have a, Higgs boson is not in this list. So if you include the Higgs boson, that was discovered in 2014. Yeah. There's two called weak force? Uh, w boson. We'll get to that. There's W boson and Z boson, which were produced in the 70s or something, 60s. Um, so maybe I should move away from that. All right, <laughs> let's keep moving you back to here. So two particles, we are going to pretend that they are elementary for us for now, because these are particles you know. And until we get to talking about hadrons or particles produced via nuclear for a strong force, this will be good enough for us. They are elementary enough for us. They will be protons and neutrons that you have heard about. And the big spoiler that I have uh, revealed right now is that protons and neutrons are not really elementary. They are made up of even smaller particles, but we can actually pretend that they are elementary because the particles they are ma supposed to be made up of, quarks, uh, we have never seen a free quark. So, uh, I mean, sorry, I, but let's just pretend that they are elementary for now. So this is, if you are a particle physicist living in the 20s and 30s, 1920s and 30s, this was your world. These were all the particles that you know. And your kind of starting assumption is that everything else are made up of this. All the atoms are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. All the interactions that you see, it's a result of a photon, electromagnetic interaction. But I guess you do have a one hint of that this is not everything that's out there. It's that, it's what we were talking about on Tuesday. When you look at the atomic nucleus, if you are only dealing with electromagnetic force, there's no way that atomic nucleus can exist, right? That seems, rings a bell for everyone, okay. Because in an atomic nucleus, these are the only things you have. Protons would repel each other. Something is binding them together. So there is some other force that's not electromagnetic force that's, um, that's not electromagnetic force that's bonding the nucleus together. And just like electromagnetic force leads to a photon, there would be other particles that are, uh, that needed to be associated with that nuclear force. So that's uh, something on the horizon that's going to come up. And in connection to that, 
I need to introduce uh, this particular phrase or concept. It's the concept of a force mediator. Or sometimes um, it might be called uh, mediator boson, because they all happen to be bosons. And this is kind of why I introduced the Feynman diagram, because the Feynman diagram, um, um, the way it's drawn, it always includes this force mediator. For example, imagine this interaction. Imagine the interaction between a um, proton and an electron around it, like in a hydrogen atom. Now, when you look at the picture, the way we are used to handling it, do you see a photon anywhere in, well, sorry, so it's gonna be an electron cloud, not in an orbit. Um, when you look at that, do you see any photon in that particular interaction in an electron and the proton that's in the core of the hydrogen atom? We don't see any real photon, right? But in the way we handle it in particle physics, you still illustrate that um, illustrated interaction by as being mediated by a virtual photon. So if you are drawing that interaction, wow, this, okay, I need to identify at some point which of my pens are popping and um, I don't know, do something to them so that they don't pop anymore. <laughs> so you would draw them this way. So um, one way to illustrate mediator boson, for example, hydrogen atom you would draw them, draw the interaction of the, um, of the electron with the proton in the hydrogen atom as well. You have a proton coming, come in. You have um, electron come in, and you need to have electron going out, and you have proton going out, and you would say, well, I'm trying to draw this Feynman diagram thing, um, so it would need to be vertex here, at the vertex, electron coming in, going out. Vertex here, proton coming in, proton going out. And these would be connected by a photon. So this is the virtual photon, as your textbook labels it. Or in the language that we want to use that will apply to forces that are not electromagnetic, this will be the force mediator. And just to kind of flash forward to what we are getting to later on, here, all these are force mediators, or the, all these bosons are the force mediators. Mediates electromagnetic interaction, strong interaction, weak interaction. So, um, so that's a kind of a spoiler of something that's uh, going to come in the future. Um, the fact that we have evidences, hints of uh, forces or interactions that's not electromagnetic means we are going to have additional force mediators soon. Um, but for now, let's just start out with the additional particles that make up matter, additional fermions. So these force mediators, they all happen to be boson. I don't think there's a fundamental law of physics that says they must be bosons. In fact, the whole, if you have heard of supersymmetry, the entire idea there is based on the fact that it doesn't have to be that way. And so, um, but the universe as we know it now, it just happens so that um, all these particles that make up matter, they are fermions. Or let me just call them matter particles. So what I want to give you a long introduction to is how other matter particles were discovered. Because these uh, are kind of a normal, um, usual matter particles that you are familiar with. You've seen them since chemistry. And the matter particles that we are going to talk about now are the ones that were discovered either by accident or by people just pondering things in the elementary interactions. And um, so um, I guess uh, the way I'm going to talk about this today it's a little bit different from the order this one takes place, but I think it's the order that makes sense to us. 